So let's talk a little bit about that, because to, to me, this is m maybe one of the most stunning things about the whole Israeli-Palestinian issue is that is the extent to which people are anti-Israel and the extent to which they hate Israel. And you see that, I see that particularly when I travel to Europe, but I see it in the U.S. among libertarians, of all people, right, mm -hmm. um, and who claim to be pro-freedom and then a pro-Palestinian and anti-Israel. So let's, let's just do just facts, right? What is life like basically in Israel? What is life like basically under the Palestinian Authority? Well, what life is like under the Palestinian Authority or under Gaza is, is essentially cut from the same cloth as you would get in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Egypt, Jordan. Basically, it's tyrannical. So there is no freedom of speech. If you go on Facebook and you criticize Mahmoud Abbas, who is the so-called president of the Palestinian Authority, you will get thrown in jail or taken to court and, and punished. This actually happened just a few months, you know, a year or two ago. A journalist was criti didn't criticize him harshly. He just ridiculed him. You cannot do that. If you are gay, God help you. Because if your neighbors don't come after you, the, one of the security forces, because they have a whole bunch of gangs fighting for whose territory is what, they'll come after you. And some of them have become, uh, have sought ref they've, they've, they've sought to be asylum seekers within Israel. They've fled the Palestinian Authority. If you're a woman, well, under Hamas, you, you're made to, to don a veil and you are, if you're a man, you're made to grow a beard. And so they've brought in the morality police that you see in Saudi Arabia, in Iran, even Egypt has its own kind of morality police that people don't know enough about. So these are societies that are highly controlled. I mean, the, the idea that Mahmoud Abbas is the president of the Palestinian Authority, well, he's deferred the elections. He's in the 13th year of a four-year term. It's ridiculous. I mean, this is an authoritarian regime where your life is in control by the state. I mean, the, it is incredibly controlled. What about economic of, freedom, like, like property rights? Are there property rights in, in the, the Palestinian Authority? The, they belong to those who have a gun. So if you have a nice villa and somebody wants it and who belongs to the Palestinian Authority, they'll come in and they'll take your house. They'll take your car in the street. So this is a regime where they're not concerned about the Palestinians' rights. They're concerned about exploiting people and gaining territory and conquest. And one of the things that is typical of authoritarian regimes and in tyrannies in general, is economic exploitation, which is just a feature of, you know, they believe they should control. And the amount of money that has flowed into the Palestinian Authority is breathtaking. It's roughly about 400 million a year just from the US. In the first five years of the Palestinian Authority, they got like $2.6 billion in front of it. Where has it gone? A lot of it went to oh, ammunition and oh, training. No. We know when Arafat died, right. he had, what, a billion, over a billion dollars in a Swiss bank account? So these are not regimes that are designed to, uh, I mean, it's an understatement, but these are regimes that are methodical in their oppression of individuals. Like the idea that we have, we have real problems with free speech in the United States, but we still have a free press, even if the president would like it to be otherwise. There is no free press in the Middle East, in the Palestinian territories or in Gaza. There is one place that is different. And then, so we can turn to Israel. Yep. Um, so in Israel, there is real freedom of speech. There is real property rights. There's intellectual property rights. And economically, I mean, so, so in, in every dimension, if you're a woman, if you're gay, or think of all the minorities, religious minorities. You, if you're a Christian, so there are some Christians who live under the Palestinian Authority. There aren't that many anymore because they've been, they've been persecuted out. And just as they've been persecuted out of Egypt and, and other countries in the Middle East. But Israel has a thriving community of Christians, a thriving movement, a community of Muslims of various sects, regardless of what which you are. And you know that the sectarian fighting among Muslims is, is crazy. And that's a big part of what's going on in Syria. There's a community of um, an original minority called the Baha'i. They originated in Iran. But in Iran, you can't really live as a Baha'i because the government has made it its project to persecute you. And so, but in Israel, the Baha'i temple in Haifa, where you grew up, is is a landmark for tourists to come and see. So the, the idea of religious freedom and intellectual freedom is it's just an unheard of outside of Israel's borders, but it's a real phenomenon within the country. Um, so in every dimension that matters for human life and what options you have to live and pursue your own life according to your judgment, you actually have the, the ability to do that in Israel. 
And, and that's to whether you're Jew or an Arab or Christian or Baha'i. It is. And you can see that in, it, that's the fundamental. So it's, it's kind of paradoxical that they, Israel calls itself the Jewish state. And it is in important ways. It has religion that sort of, it's a significant part of the way they, they conceptualize their government and their country. But that's not anything like what it means to be Saudi Arabia, which is a Muslim state. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not the law of the land in the same way. And they actually have religious freedom for people who are not Jews. And what it means to be a Jew is also itself kind of a, a big package because a lot of Israelis that I know and that you know and that predominate are not religious in the way that the Hasidic Jews are. And so it's a remarkably atheist secular country that leans left, uh, that has incredible political freedom. And so one of the manifestations of that materially is the extent to which Israel is a, it is, economically, it is a powerhouse in the region. It's tiny. It doesn't have the natural resources that you see like petroleum in the rest of the, a lot of the other countries. But what it has distinguished itself with is through high tech and through biotech. And the number of startups in Israel, it's been dubbed the startup nation. It's not an accident. There's a real ethos of entrepreneurialism in Israel. It's been there for, for decades. It isn't just with a dot-com uh, development. And that, when you zoom out and you see that, so there's real political freedom, intellectual freedom, and economic freedom. Now, it could be freer, right? Yeah, but, much freer, yeah. but relative to its neighbors, and even relative to parts of Europe and, and certain uh, uh, sectors in the U.S., you can see that the manifestation of, those kinds of freedoms leads to greater prosperity. Um, th so that I think the number of companies from Israel that are listed on NASDAQ, so the, the, the priority is the U.S. has the most, then China, then Israel. And that's yep. crazy. I mean, it's yep. relative to proportion. Tiny little country. And you can also look at the number of scientific articles that are generated per capita, the number of Nobel laureates in the actual hard sciences and in, in the fields that are not as politicized. So in all these respects, you have a society that is actually, there really is freedom. Now, I would love it to be greater freedom, but still, it's freedom. And that is an achievement. Like, if you think of all the other countries that were started in the 20th century that became independent, where have they, where have they ended up? Like, just to, by that measure. But just in world historical scales, like, achieving a free society is a, an amazing achievement. No, I, I, I want to second that. I mean, the, the, the fact that in, the, in 60 years, what Israel has achieved, given the odds, given the wars, given the threats, given the hundreds of millions of Arabs uh, and Muslims surrounding it that, that want to annihilate it, uh, and, and what they have achieved in terms of a thriving economy, in terms of startups, in terms of science, in terms of a free society, uh, in, in terms of... Uh, you know, in, in, in really in every respect. Now, I'm a huge critic of Israel, and part of why I don't live there, right? But to, you have to put it in, in historical and in, in global perspective. This is a massive, massive achievement. It is a huge achievement of human ingenuity and hu a huge achievement of reason and, and, and of, of, you know, hard work and, and, and commitment. So, uh, you know, and, and for people to... To criticize it on, on stupidity is it, it just, you know, evading the, all, the, all the greatness that has been achieved is just absurd.